Welcome back to our option series. Today we're going to do a deep dive into the option chain formula. The main difference between option data, which you've hopefully already had a chance to learn to use, and option chain, is that option data will return pricing data for a single option, and option chain will return data for the entire chain. Normally, we use option data to track our open positions uh, for options that we already own, and we'll make use of option chain to browse the options that are available and explore ideas for new trades. The option chain formula allows us to get a ton of option data and it's super easy to use. You can get as complex or as simple as you want with all the filtering options that are available. Let's take a look at something really basic. Here's the option chain for Apple with no filters at all. That's just option chain Apple. There you go, look all the way to column Y. So that's more than two dozen columns of data and 153 rows. Uh, that's a ton of data. Make sure you are using a blank sheet before you start playing around with option chain. So this is a ton of data, right? 25 columns. I don't need a column saying the underline is Apple. This is way too much. So with option chain, it's much easier if we request our own columns specifically instead of just letting the formula output the default options. Let's just get the symbol, the strike, uh, the side, the expiration, and uh, the midpoint price. Now, where is this data coming from? We now have five columns and we still have our 150 some rows. Uh, but if you look at the expiration date column, you'll see all these strikes are different, but the expiration date is always March 17th. And that is because we didn't put an expiration date in the parameters. So the formula is just assuming we want the next monthly expiration. But we actually have complete control over this. So let's head over to the Yahoo Finance website for a second. And let's see what expirations are available for Apple. Okay, let's have a look here in the drop down. Okay, let's get the last expiration in March. So that's going to be March 31st, 2023. So we'll head back over to our spreadsheet and we're going to add a third parameter now. The third parameter is going to be the expiration date. So that's going to be 331. 2023 and this of course can be a cell reference as well and there we go so now we've modified the expiration date you can see all the uh, strikes are now coming from the 331 expiration so I know all of you are using market data together with Yahoo or your broker platform or some other website that has the option chain and that's okay but what if we could do everything now inside the spreadsheet? And now you can. Uh, here's the best part about working with dates now. Let's say I want to open a position with an option that expires in 45 days, but I don't know what the exact expiration is. Let's see how we can do that. Um, let's delete the 331 2023 and let's put 45 DTE, that's days to expiration. And now you'll see that when you use DTE, it isn't always going to be exact since you don't have options expiring every day. But what it will do is use the expiration that most closely matches. So I'm going to do uh, 42823 minus today. You can see that's 42 days from today. That's pretty close. To the 45 days we were looking for so now i can use this option chain formula and browse the options that are going to expire 45 days from today now we're going to filter by strike so let's do 150 to 170 and watch how we now just get rid of all the strikes in here and we've now got this down to a perfectly manageable 19 rows total, our spreadsheet. And there we go, strikes 150 to 170 with the calls. 
150 to 170 with the puts. So I'm going to do a little vertical call spread and price that out. Um, so I'm going to filter the option chain a little bit further. Since I'm going to use calls in my spread, I don't want any puts anymore. So let's see how we can modify the formula, add a fifth parameter, and just request the calls. So we don't want the puts anymore. Let's get rid of them. So let's add a new parameter, and we'll just want uh, calls in there. And there we go, just calls now. Now, let's say I want to simulate a trade here. Uh, since I'm bullish on Apple, I'm gonna buy the 150 call and sell the 160 to lower my cost basis a bit. Uh, so let's get rid of that range and let's just put in the two strikes that I'm interested in. And you'll see now that instead of coming back with all those calls from the range, I now get the exact two strikes that I need. Great, that makes things a lot easier to keep track of. Now I'm gonna set up a little dashboard for this potential trade. The price of the trade, that's the cost of the spread, is gonna be the long call minus the short call. My break even price is gonna be the cost of the trade plus the long call strike. My risk, uh, the maximum loss, is gonna be the cost of the trade uh, multiplied by 100. And my maximum profit is gonna be the width of the strikes, which is $10 in this case, minus the cost of entering the trade uh, and then we're going to obviously multiply all of that by 100. Okay, now each time I open this spreadsheet, I'm going to get pricing on a $10.45 day vertical spread. But wait, what happens if Apple goes up to say 170? Then instead of this being an at the money spread, it's all of a sudden an in the money spread. And that's not the trade I wanted to put on. So if we want to evaluate potential future trades and, and have this adjust automatically, uh, it can be easier to use deltas for our strikes instead of uh, fixed dollar amounts. So let's do the 60 delta, 30 delta um, for our strikes and let's see how that works. And so there we go, 152.5 and 165. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add the next column here. Let's add a delta column to our output so we can see how close that's matching. So that's that's matching pretty close, a 60 delta and a 27 delta for our short strike. Now, we've made this pretty dynamic. Every time we open this spreadsheet, we're gonna get the 60 and 30 delta uh, call options for Apple 45 days out. So this spreadsheet is, is basically gonna work forever. We don't ever need to adjust the expiration date or adjust the strikes. It's all gonna be automatic and it's gonna use the option chain uh, from the day that we open up the spreadsheet. But what if we wanna make it a little bit more dynamic and, and sort of convert this into a little option screener? Uh, I, can, I can build that in about 30 seconds using this formula. So instead of using the Apple ticker, we'll make this work with any ticker that we want. Uh, just by modifying the, the formulas a bit. So here we've got now Google, and now it's pulling up the 60 and the 30 delta 45 day strikes for Google. And we can see what our max loss is, our max profit, our break even point. And now we'll do it for Microsoft. Same thing max loss, max profit, trade price, break even, using the same criteria 60 delta, 30 delta. Okay, I forgot to update the, the stock data formula here to get the, uh, the current price. Let's fix that. Uh, sorry. There we go. Now, now it, it's actually dynamic. So we get the current price for the ticker plus the 30 delta, 60 delta, 45 day uh, strikes for the options. Uh, so this is a rudimentary debit call spread dashboard that will automatically calculate key metrics for the spread and this all updates automatically every time you open your sheet. So build it once and then forget about it. No need to update the strikes since we're using deltas and no need to update the expiration dates 
since we're using uh, the DTE parameter. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry for the length this time, but it was a lot of material to cover. I hope this has been educational, and please do not forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, happy trading. Thank you.